Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I've been on the ketogenic diet for about 10 months now and I'm down 60 pounds since the birth of my second daughter. I still have about 15 pounds to go to get down to my goal weight, but I wanted to hop on here and share with you five things that I like about the ketogenic diet and five things that are not my favorite. If you're interested in hearing about these 10 things, stick around. Well, I have my list here of five things that I love and five things that I don't love about the ketogenic diet. I'm going to start with the things that I don't love first. That way we can end the video on a positive note of things that I really enjoy about it. So number one, in no specific order um, of things that I don't like about the ketogenic diet is the occasional carb cravings. Let's be honest, the ketogenic diet is about drastically reducing the amount of sugar and carbohydrates that you consume on a daily basis. So naturally, we tend to have cravings for those things that we once used to eat on a daily basis. So I tend to notice these cravings come on closer to that time of the month for me. Um, other times when they come on is when I've been extremely active or it's hot outside. Um, this winter has been okay for me as far as cravings, but when it's really warm outside, uh, for some reason, I just, I get more hungry, I'm sweating more, and I feel like I want to refuel with carbs. Number two, frequent trips to the grocery store. Um, with all of the vegetables that we go through and all the perishable meat items that we go through, I find us going to the grocery store much more often nowadays. And number three kind of ties with number two. Because you're going to the grocery store and you are buying fresh produce, fresh meat, and fresh dairy on a more regular basis, it tends to be a little bit more expensive than if you were consistently eating um, out of pantry items that you've had stored in your house for a while. Um, it's, it is more expensive to buy produce and meat and dairy than it is to buy breads and pastas and things like that that are less perishable. So number two and three, shopping more often and usually spending more per grocery trip are on the downside for things that I don't necessarily love about the ketogenic diet. Number four is low blood sugars. I'm a type 1 diabetic, which is one of the main reasons that I went on the ketogenic diet to help me control my blood glucose levels from rising and falling so often. And part of the side effects of reducing sugar is then, of course, low blood sugars. So I've had to spend a lot of time with my doctor and on my insulin pump, um, making sure to properly adjust all of my insulin levels on my insulin pump. Um, I will say that things have leveled out quite a bit for me and I haven't had to make um, as big of adjustments recently, but in the first six months of going keto, your body goes through so many different changes and so many different transitions that um, just about on a weekly basis, I'd have to go and decrease the amount of insulin per carb that I was eating due to my sensitivity changing and due to just my overall insulin needs decreasing. And finally, at number five, the last thing that I'll explain today that I don't enjoy about keto is sometimes going out to eat can be difficult. In most cases, I'm successful. A lot of places serve hamburgers that you can just have without the bun. A lot of places have chicken wings, and I love chicken wings. You have to be careful of the sauces that you're using and eating, but in most cases, you could have a dry rub chicken wing or a buffalo chicken wing and dip it in ranch and you're good to go. The good thing is I love those things. I love burgers and you can put all sorts of toppings on it. Um, not things like barbecue sauce or ketchup, of course, but I can have a burger pretty much anywhere I go. I can have wings pretty much anywhere I go. I can have a steak and broccoli pretty much anywhere you go, right? But there are some cases where the family wants pizza. Pizza places are obviously going to be very difficult to go and actually sit down and eat at. Most pizza places don't have ketogenic options. So that number five one, we don't go out to eat a whole lot. And when we do, I'm usually okay. And I can find something on the menu that I can have. I have noticed that restaurants recently are um, incorporating more low carb options uh, as well as gluten-free options on their menus. So they are picking up the trend that 
low carb people are out there and they want to go out to eat as well. Now moving on to the five things that I love about keto. The first thing, and again, in no particular order, is how easy and how simple it's been for me once I've adjusted my insulin pump settings to control my blood glucose levels. My last A1C was a 5.9, and before that it was a 6.3. So my last two A1C readings have been phenomenal. Before keto, I would never have been able to control my blood sugar this well. I had to prick my finger constantly throughout the day to make sure that I was rising and falling according to my plan. For those of you who don't know what an A1C level is, it's essentially a three-month snapshot of your average blood sugar level. For me, my target blood sugar range is between 80 and 120. That's a fairly tight range to try to stay in. With keto, it's possible, and I only check between one and two times a day. Secondly, of course, the reason I think that most people hop onto the keto diet is weight loss. Since my second daughter, I've lost over 60 pounds, and we're teetering closer to 65 pounds now. Yes, some of that was the baby water weight that came off, but I attribute the ketogenic diet to a majority of that weight loss, and the fact that it's happened quickly and it's been sustainable has been the best part about it. So if you're looking for a way to go ahead and lose weight, don't only refer to this video, do your research, talk to your doctor, and make sure that it's a good option for you health-wise. But the ketogenic diet has been extremely successful for me to lose some of the weight that I never could have before. Number three is my hunger is curbed. I know I talked about in the five things that I dislike that sometimes I have carb cravings. But generally speaking, most of the time, I don't get that super hungry, painful, um, growling stomach feeling that I used to get. And when I do get close to getting hungry, it's fewer and far farther between, if that makes sense. Think about your body running on sugar. You eat a meal, your insulin level spikes because you have to cover all of the carbohydrates you just ate in that meal. And then your insulin level drops back down and guess what? Right after that drop, you're hungry again. So usually every two to four hours, a uh, person who's running off of carbohydrates and sugar is hungry. So you're hungry more frequently and you need to eat throughout the day more often in order to sustain yourself. Once your body has gotten away from using sugar as its optimal fuel source or its only fuel source, and it starts using the fat that's already on your body, your hunger um, it takes a lot longer to kick in. So you'll have your meal, your insulin might spike a little bit depending on what you eat, but then it slowly comes back down and it really levels you off for a longer period of time. So with the ketogenic diet, you can go for longer periods of time without eating and your hunger is not as severe as when you're a carb burner. So that was number three. Number four, I talked about doing multiple trips every week to the grocery store being a bad thing. But if we look at the bright side of that, the reason you're going to the grocery store is because you're eating fresh, nutrient-dense food. So more frequently, we're getting more vegetables into our diet, more berries and low carb food, um, fruit into our diet. So we're frequently going to the grocery store because we're eating so well. I've never in my life eaten this many vegetables before, and I've never in my life enjoyed berries as much as I do now. Granted, I do portion them out properly, which is a good thing. I'm not eating um, apples and bananas and oranges and things that are very high on the glycemic index. I'm eating berries like blueberries and strawberries and occasionally raspberries and blackberries. And those berries all have antioxidants and vitamins and minerals in them that our bodies do need, but we don't need all the sugar. So it's important to control your portions when it comes to fruit. However, on the opposite side of things, with vegetables, we're eating broccoli like it's going out of style. We're eating cauliflower and asparagus and Brussels sprouts. I'm eating avocados. I'm having nutrient-dense salads that include iceberg lettuce, spinach, romaine lettuce, and it's all because of the ketogenic diet. I think there's a common misconception that the ketogenic diet is unhealthy because it's all about fat and meat. That's not the case. The fat that I'm getting is from avocados. 
avocado oil, um, healthy grass-fed butter. Um, there's so many other ways to get in healthy fats than just bacon. So read beyond some of those negative ketogenic um, articles that you might see and look into what it could be for you. And finally, after nutrient-dense food, I have to say that meal planning's become very simple for us. My husband is definitely a meat and vegetable kind of guy. So if I can cook a steak and have broccoli on the side, which is what we had last night, that's so simple. So meal planning has really become less difficult, less complicated, um, and just really easy for us all around. I've been able to cut out a lot of the carbs that the family eats or would have been eating on a normal basis. So we very rarely have French fries with our burgers anymore. My daughter doesn't even like bread. She won't eat a bun on her hamburger. She won't eat a bun on her hot dog. She gets her carbs from her meat. She gets her carbs from her vegetables. She gets her carbs from her fruit. She doesn't need the, the bread that has zero nutrients in it. She doesn't need, um, the gross sugary cereal that all it does is spike her glucose level and then make her hungry 20 minutes later. Yes, we still give her some of those things, so no negative comments, please. We do still treat her once in a while, but I'm really proud to be able to say that I've helped to transition the family away from those empty carbs that we were eating before, and now a majority of our carbs are coming from nutrient-dense food. So there you have it the five things that I love about keto and the five things that I don't love about keto. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them below. I'd love for you to stick around and join my keto journey. I'm a mom of two and a wife, and I'm also working full-time outside the home, so I have a busy life, and keto has really been able to help um, me control my hunger, my cravings, get through life with more energy, and help sustain me as a type 1 diabetic to be healthy into the future. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.